Hey, what's up YouTube? Douglas81 here. I'm gonna bring you a review today of this Savage 111 bolt action rifle. This is a gun that I own personally, and I'm gonna talk to you today about some of the features of this gun, uh, the packages that you can get, some of the specs, uh, how it groups. We're gonna do a tabletop plus a range visit. We're gonna be firing a variety of different ammunition today, uh, all 30 out 6, but different uh, brands and we'll see how they group up. Uh, I've put about 250 rounds through this rifle in the last two years and I've uh, taken it on some deer hunts, moose hunts uh, and this is the very first rifle I've ever owned uh, that's of this caliber. So let's jump right into it. Alright so this version of the Savage 111 is called the FCXP3. Uh, those letters are just product codes for Savage uh, you can find out what they mean on their website, on their uh, FAQ page. Uh, but basically, uh, the F refers to uh, synthetic stock. C means that the clip is a detachable box magazine. Uh, the XP means that it's a package gun. Uh, I have no idea what the 3 means, uh, so you got me there. If anyone knows, I'd love to find out. This model is now replaced in 2012 with uh, the new Savage 111. Hunter XP it's called. It's basically the exact same gun except that the barrel is a matte black instead of a matte blue. I got this rifle in southern Ontario. I got it for $3.99 as a package with the scope. Uh, Cabela's.ca I think is selling this right now as of April 2012 for $3.79 Canadian. Uh, you can see it's got lots of good reviews and uh, it's actually on back order last time I checked for the 30-06 chambering. Of the available calibers to choose from, I chose the 30-06 uh, due to the ability to hunt both large and small game, uh, anything from moose to deer. And the fact that it's both a readily available uh, cartridge and a common hand loading cartridge, it appealed to me in that respect. Uh, a 308 would probably also have done the same job for um, big and small game, no problem. Alright, so let's uh, dip down to the butt end of this rifle, starting at the recoil pad. It's a nice, soft, flexible material. Uh, absorbs a good amount of the kick that a 180 grain 30 out 6 will throw at you. So it should be good through the 308, and uh, every other chambering shouldn't be much of a problem there at all. This package also came with the swivel studs mounted to the front and back of the stock, but the sling I bought additionally. It was the maybe 30 bucks Canadian Tire Special. I also bought separately the 9 shell holder for 30 caliber rounds. Uh, I think I spent maybe 10 bucks on that. The shell holder is nice, more for aesthetic value really, or if you're at the range, unless you're hunting a herd of buffalo or, or defending yourself from a horde of zombies or something. The stock is made of a black synthetic material and incorporates something called dual pillar bedding into the action assembly. This just means that the two screws that secure the action and trigger to the stock, they screw into a couple of embedded cylinders or pillars as opposed to just screwing into the stock itself directly. This adds to rigidity and gives it strength and that turns into accuracy downrange. The stock also has some really nice cut checkering on the grip as well as uh, on the forend which makes it sit really nice in the hands. Uh, rain or shine, very little slip going to be happening with this rifle and uh, it just adds a nice look in my opinion. Another point of accuracy for this gun is the button rifled free floating barrel. Uh, button rifling just refers to the process that they use to create the grooves inside the barrel, the spiraling grooves. There's different kinds of rifling, um, but button rifling has, I guess you could say, been proven to be fairly consistent and accurate over the years. Uh, the free-floating barrel means that the barrel is not actually attached to the stock uh, beyond where it is attached at the action assembly. Um, the advantage of this is that, or at least some of the logic behind this, is as the barrel heats up it, it expands slightly and can press against the stock if it was attached to it and that slightly deforms it and slightly changes the uh, sight alignment um, therefore degrading accuracy uh, another perspective on it uh, is the what's called resonance and the barrel basically vibrates at 
at a certain frequency um, each time it's shot. And the more consistent that, that vibration is from one shot to the next, the more consistent uh, your accuracy is going to be. So the free floating barrel is uh, adding to the accuracy, as is the dual pillar bedding. And both those things combined are actually making this rifle quite accurate uh, right out of the box. Uh, mine came bore sighted, but most would in a package uh, that you'd get. A couple other features about this barrel, it's 22 inches long and uh, for the 30-06 it has a, a rate of twist of 1 in 10, uh, meaning that the spiraling rifling pattern inside the barrel makes one revolution for every 10 inches or, or 2.2 revolutions for the length of this barrel. A barrel twist is different for different calibers and basically helps to stabilize the bullet in flight so different loads will require uh, a different rate of twist. Taking a look at the trigger, it's pretty basic, nothing fancy here. Uh, fairly short trigger pull on it, but fairly heavy at the same time. Close to 8 pounds, which may be a negative for some. I don't uh, mind the trigger weight at all. Actually, uh, it, it feels nice to me. But some may see this as a negative and may opt to get it filed down by a gunsmith or you could put an aftermarket trigger or uh, probably get an accu trigger put into this uh, into this rifle. The trigger guard is nice and wide in front so there's lots of room to get a glove in there uh, if you are hunting or shooting in the colder climates. Taking a look at the bolt, I personally have a preference for bolt action rifles. One of the reasons is that you can remove the bolt typically uh, in this case, with the bolt out, you can examine the bore and make sure there's nothing in there before you shoot it without having to look down the business end of the of the muzzle. The bolt has the uh, ejection handle right underneath the scope mount, the rear scope mount, and you need to hold that down while pulling the trigger to release the bolt. One thing to note is the safety has to be in the off position to do this. This bolt in particular appears to be made of steel, feels really solid in the hand, has the really nice Savage logo on it, very shiny, and also has some nice grip so that when you're cycling the action, your hand can stay attached to the bolt. The cycling action of the bolt is really smooth on this firearm. I've never had one jam uh, within 250 shots that I've taken of it. As long as you pull it back all the way and push it in all the way, you're pretty much good to go. I really like the safety on this rifle. It's in a nice position ergonomically and just feels right. has three positions, safety off, safety on, and there's a half safe as well. In the safety on position, you can neither pull the trigger nor cycle the action. In the safety off position, then you can obviously pull the trigger and after you've fired a shell, you can cycle the action to load in another cartridge. The half safe position is a really nice feature on this rifle. It allows you to eject a cartridge without the risk of pulling the trigger. So if you need to cycle the action to get a round out, you can do that without the risk of the gun firing accidentally. I really like the detachable box magazine. I prefer them over internal magazines for bolt action rifles. This magazine holds four, plus there's room for one more in the chamber. So this is a five round rifle. There's a couple ways to do this, but the way I load five rounds is I'll load up the magazine first with four and insert that into the rifle, and then I'll hold down the top cartridge with my thumb while I slide the action forward about halfway, and then you've got some room to insert a fifth round right into the chamber and close the action and away you go. The scope that came with this rifle is the Bushnell 3x9x40. That means it's a variable powered scope that zooms between 3 and 9 times and the lens at the far end is 40 millimeters, 3 by 9 by 40. A lot of people don't like this scope, you get a lot of negative comments on this scope. Personally, I have no problem with this scope whatsoever, but I could see how some would maybe want to upgrade to something that has a reticle with perhaps uh, some mill dots or some yardage indications. Otherwise, to me it's a great scope. You'll find the windage and elevation adjustments uh, if you remove the caps on the scope. The windage on the right and the elevation on the top, and they both work the same. Uh, they're easy to move with just your thumb and finger. You don't need a penny or any slotted screwdriver or anything like that. 
and one click is equal to one quarter inch at a hundred yards as it says uh, that's the same as about one mi one quarter minute of angle at a hundred yards to give you an idea of the zoom capability of this scope take a look at this picture here you'll see a tree straight ahead and that tree is about 300 yards away if we look through the scope with three times zoom it looks a fair bit closer and with the nine times zoom it's actually quite clear you can even make out the bulrushes underneath so that's 300 yards that's pretty decent the only thing I wish I had on this scope was some kind of yardage indicator but other than that it's really good now I've taken this scope out in the pouring rain for hours at a time hunting and it's never once fogged up on me I've used it in low light conditions and it's actually pretty good so overall I would give this scope a thumbs up though I will say one of the negative comments I've heard the most about this scope is actually about the scope mounts being loose and although I didn't see that on mine personally my buddy Jim just bought this same rifle and we did see it on his but good chance right there to jump in with some Loctite on the threads and then you never have to worry about that problem again alright so when we add up all the features and specs we get a rifle that weighs about six and a half pounds which is not very heavy in my opinion I've got no trouble carrying this gun in and out of the bush for a day um, even though we did cover quite a bit there's still a lot I had to leave out so if you guys have time go check out Savage's website on their multimedia page and there's some pretty cool videos that you can look at there as well for now that's it for this part let's take it out to the range and see how it groups up and then we'll wrap it up alright guys we're out at the range here today and we're going to be shooting the Savage 111 uh, today we're going to shoot some Winchester Winchester Super X PowerPoint. It's 180 grain, 30 out six. Uh, we're also going to shoot some Winchester Power Max bonded hollow point, and uh, that's 30 out six, 180 grain as well. And then we're going to shoot some Federal Power Shock 180 grain, 30 out six. Uh, this is a soft point ammunition. So we'll see how these three compare. We got four shots. We'll do a four shot group. Okay, so we shot 12 rounds out of each box of ammo in four shot groups. We're going to start with the Winchester PowerPoint. Now there's a couple ways to go about this, but I'm going to be taking the three shots closest to each other and finding their average distance from the center of that group. Uh, this way we can see the potential grouping of the round by discounting inaccuracies caused by the shooter or me. So keeping in mind that this is an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, uh, although the shots look far apart, they're actually not that bad. For reference, my thumb is less than an inch. Uh, in measuring, I've rounded to the nearest quarter inch. So in the first group, we got a grouping of three down near the bottom that are centering about one and a quarter inches from each other. Uh, that's the same as one and a quarter minutes of angle. In the second group, we get a couple pairs here. If we look at the top right three, we get those guys centering around one and a half minutes of angle. And in our third group, we get two near the bottom and a couple up top. If we take the left three, we get one minute of angle as an average. So the group of Winchester PowerPoint averages out to be one and a quarter minutes of angle. Not too bad, but nothing to write home about. All right, looking at the Winchester Power Max now, we can see that it's a bit of a tighter group, more consistent, and they're averaging out about one minute of angle. If we look at our second group, again, three nice shots near the middle, one flyer off to the right, and these are again averaging around one minute of angle and looking at our third group we get about the same as the previous two one minute of angle as an average again so overall the Winchester Power Max is averaging a group of about one minute of angle slightly outdoing the previous Winchester Power Point now when I was shooting the first group of Federal I got a nice line of three shots within about an eighth of a minute of elevation from each other the only problem was in this case I was actually aiming for his head so as it turns out these rounds were shooting about three and a half minutes too low 
Uh, they did, however, group up to a nice average of about one minute of angle, so not too bad. Good consistency and elevation for the most part. Uh, then I dialed the scope up 14 clicks, aimed right at his head, and got the next grouping, which was pretty decent at about half a minute. If we ignore the one that blew his ear off, I think that's a nice tight group. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this start of Federal. And my third and final shot of the Federal wasn't too bad. I got a nice group of three pretty close to the center. They averaged out to about three quarters of a minute of angle. So overall, the way everything stacks up, we have the Winchester PowerPoint averaging out to one and a quarter minutes of angle with some not so nice looking groups in general. The Winchester Power Max averaging out to about one minute of angle with some decently nice groups near the center and the Federal Power Shock averaging out to about 0.75 of a minute of angle. So I'm by no means an expert marksman or anything like that. Um, I'm getting better every day, but these shots aren't too bad for 100 yards. If I can shoot within an inch, now I just got to move these more towards the center, and then I'm pretty much good to go. So overall, I highly recommend this rifle. Excellent gun for the price, and a really great first hunting rifle, and also a good gun overall to take out with you into the field. So this concludes the first review I've ever done. Hope you guys liked it, and if you did, give me a thumbs up, and I'll make some more. Got any questions, comments, shoot me a line down below, I'll get right back to you. Until then, safe shooting and good hunting. Yeah.